One myth with regard to international development, or, or I'm not even sure if it's a myth or if it's just something we are used to because it's a form of saying, is USA number one. So let's have a look at some statistics uh, and see where USA is number one. So let's go to one of the variables and characteristics that should be at the core of the inventor of modern time democracies, the United States of America, which is freedom of the press. So here you have 40 countries. And my question to you is, rank these 40 countries with regard to the global ranking with freedom of the press. So who is number one, two, five, and, and who comes later uh, in these 40 countries? Well, these 40 countries, they are ranked with regard to freedom of the press. Uh, the United States in freedom of the press ranking is usually ranks uh, about rank, let's say 30, 40, 50, and sometimes even worse. One of the main culprits, one of the main reasons is that the different media outlets, but they're concentrated in so few hands that you get uh, a very homogeneous message setting in, in the media landscape, in contrast to other countries where you have much more diverse media landscape. So here's this, it's Reporters Without Borders that does this ranking and, and say that they say that is a, one of the reasons why the United States doesn't have a lot of freedom of the press, if you look at it from this economic perspective. Let's have a look at another very important indicator, maternal mortality. So this has been one of the Millennium Development Goals. One of the Millennium Development Goals, the goals that the 200 countries of the world set themselves to work on at the turn of the millennium was to improve maternal health. So here you have four countries, and my question to you is, in which of the following countries has maternal mortality increased most between 1990 and 2013. It is the United States. Uh, maternal mortality and maternal health is something extremely important because obviously we are all born by a mother and if the health of the mother is not okay, I mean, that's a very fundamental issue, be it for developing or developed countries. And the United States here is together with some countries you might not expect like Afghanistan or Chad or Botswana. So these are some of the countries in maternal health. You are free to research why that is, but, but it's, it's a fact. Another one of the basic development goals over the turn of the millennia was to promote gender equality and, and to empower women. So that's another one of the MDGs of the Millennium Development Goals. So let's look at the empowerment of women. Rank the following countries according to the percentage of women in parliament. Now, I guess by now, you know my spiel, these countries are already ranked. So the United States, with regard to the percentage of women in parliament, empowerment of women in political setting, ranks rank 114 of 200 countries. So in the second half worldwide and other countries, Pakistan, South Sudan, Afghanistan, Cuba, and Rwanda have much more involvement of women in daily politics. Among all developed countries, the United States also ranks last with regard to the government supported time off for new parents. So with regard to the top 40 most industrialized countries in the United States, they ranks last again, an indicator for the empowerment of women and, and gender equality. Doesn't look very good there, neither. So coming back to USA number one, actually, if we look at statistics, what we find is that the United States is not really number one. Actually, the United States, if you look at it, usually ranks at rank between rank 30 and 40 in the world of 200 countries. So with regard to life expectancy, democracy, freedom of the press, uh, effectiveness of education, scientific literacy, quality of healthcare, infant survival rate, uh, 
and also some modern indicators like internet speed and the number of mobile phones per capita. The United States is not number one in these categories. Uh, now, I'm teaching in the United States. And I want to tell you very clearly one of the first and most fundamental steps in order to work on this and change it is to recognize it, is to recognize that there are some 30, 40 countries usually in the world who do it better than the United States. 30, 40 countries of the world where the United States can actually learn from. Uh, now, this is something that, first of all, has to sink in, uh, but it's a very first, a very important first recognition that we, that we have, to, have to do. Now, the United States does rank number one in a bunch of categories. For example, it is number one in the total number of crimes, in the number of rapes, in CO2 emissions, in teen birth rate, in heart attacks, and in the number of prisoners. Now, these are usually not the categories that you want to be number one in. So there again, the United States also can learn a lot from other countries. Uh, if the United States does not want to be number one in these uh, categories. Uh, now, let me assure you, it is completely okay from a subjective and personal heartfelt position to say USA number one, that's fine. You know, my favorite soccer club? will never win the championship, ever. But if you ask me, of course, I will always tell you, it is number one. You know, so from this perspective, it's completely cool to say USA is number one, but uh, as a social scientist, I have to tell you, it would be really useful to recognize that the USA is not number one in many categories. It sure used to, but in the world that we live in, it can learn a lot from other countries.